Yo YouTube, back again with the second edition of Pro Peak. This is an interview series where I ask your favorite pro riders 10 questions about how they got to where they are now and what sort of got them there. This week we have an insane guest that has influenced the scooter scene for well over a decade now. I'm super pumped to introduce OG legend, Isaac Miller. Isaac has been a staple in our sport and continues to push the boundaries of what we know is possible on a scooter. Being one of the longest lasting pros in the community, Isaac has gained so much knowledge and experience over the years, and I can't wait for him to share it with us all. It's an honor to have you on the show, bro. And with that being said, let's get straight in to question number one. Who are you? Where are you from? And when did you start scootering? Yo, what's up? My name is Isaac Miller. I'm from Cascade, Iowa, and I started scootering in the fall of 2009. So like August of 2009. Isaac has been around for so long, he's really had the opportunity to watch the sport grow from the ground up. Isaac, hands down, has made one of the biggest impacts on our sport, and that is super impressive considering he wasn't around a main hub of scooter riders, aka the East and West Coast at the time. To be practically from the middle of nowhere and rise to what he's made himself into is nothing short of astounding. Isaac is a great example to show that no matter where you're from or who you are, as long as you have enough love and drive for something, you can make your way to the top. What was the process for filming the Tilt video? Filming for the Tilt video is actually quite an interesting time in my life because for about eight months of filming that video, I wasn't even on Tilt. It was 2012 and Jordan, Yasha, and I were just out filming. Just, we didn't know what for. And I just gotten clips gathered up and I had a decent amount actually so when it came down to it uh, when we decided to make the tilt video some of us had already gotten footage saved up and then threw out tilt trips in 2013 all of us collected more footage and then we set a deadline we all kind of came together to make that video but I wasn't on tilt officially for I want to say more than half of filming that to be included in such a legendary video and not even be on the team for half the duration of filming must have been a wild experience. Obviously, the guys behind the brand saw so much potential in you, they decided to bring you in with their already established group of world-renowned shredders. Some of the clips you threw down in that video are still mind-blowing to this day. You really raised the bar and set a new standard for street scooter riding. I feel like a lot of people didn't even know the stuff that you were doing was possible at the time. I mean, who else was out there doing sevens on a spot or throwing huge 180 whips down six blocks? You even sent a full whip off a giant roof drop. For 2012, 2013, that was so unheard of and so mind-boggling at the time. The Tilt video will definitely be one of the greatest scootering videos ever made and we thank you for your involvement in propelling your discipline into new heights. Describe how the co-crew came about and what your time with them has been like. So the co-crew came about when I moved to Colorado and I had known Ian Hencher for quite a while through talking to him on the internet and shit. Like I watched his YouTube videos and uh, we just came up with the name, the co-crew and added some people that we knew who were pretty good fucking scooter riders, you know? Uh, throughout the years, We've added more people, uh, lost some people, RIP Nate. Um, and it's just been like a family experience. You know, we're all like brothers. No matter what we do, where we go, we are the co-crew. Like, it's just us, it's who we are. The co-crew is easily one of the earliest crews we've seen born from within our community. There is something so special about labeling yourself and some homies as a team and going out there and trying to make something great happen. Putting yourself in that position and allowing each other to thrive off just the way you live and the way you ride is something so unlike just showing up to a skate park with a bunch of randoms. Like you said, you're a family. To have that bond and to be able to feed off of that inseparable connection between each other is one of the best feelings our sport has been able to produce. I was lucky enough to attend the last co-crew premiere and to see the love and dedication you all share for each other is seriously amazing. Any scooter rider out there looking to take your group of friends to the next level should really go and look at co-crew for inspiration. You were and still are such an awesome group of guys, and I really hope to see some more come from the great collection of OG scooter riders. What's been your gnarliest injury from riding? <laughs> so my gnarliest injury from scooter riding, it has to be this front side 360 that I was doing down this gap 
that lands almost in gravel basically. Uh, and this is in my teaser for the tilt video. It doesn't look that bad on camera, but I front three down this gap. I land basically face plant and I scrape my face up super bad. I actually knock some of my teeth out, but since I had braces, my teeth stayed in. But if you look at my face, uh, you can see the scars. They're pretty gnarly. I don't know, bro. That fall looks pretty painful. I was actually able to find some pictures from the incident. And needless to say, you got pretty messed up. Just from that one crash, you broke your nose and had to get six stitches in your face. And I can't even imagine what you said about the teeth. To knock them out and have your braces still holding them in place must have been such a weird feeling. I know you have taken some massive slams and broken a few bones here and there, but it just goes to show that with perseverance and hard work, you can bounce back from even the gnarliest of falls. The scooter can knock you down, that's for sure but it takes a special kind of person to get back up and show that scooter who's boss. Hopefully that continues to be your gnarliest slam going forward because none of us want to see you take a fall like that again. How did you come to ride for Till and why have you chosen to stay loyal? All right, so I came to ride for Tilt in late 2012 because uh, Jordan was going on this trip with Tilt and Colin like asked, I think Jordan, if you know, I'd be a good fit for the team. And Jordan obviously like didn't know or whatnot. So Colin just invited me and I went on this trip um, kind of to prove myself and to prove to Colin that I'd be a good fit for the team. Also Monkey, Ralph McMorrin went on this trip kind of in the same aspect to show Colin you know, if we would be good fits for the team. And we went on this trip, we filmed some good tricks. Honestly, it was a very memorable trip. Like in my eyes, that was the trip that like set off scootering in a professional aspect for me. And yeah, I always look back to those days and those were super, super awesome. Um, I've chosen to stay loyal to Tilt because, you know, I really respect Colin as a company owner. I think Till still represents to me like what scootering means. And I've been through them with, you know, through like so much through every single trip and all these aspects. So, you know, I like know Till in a sense. And if I'm going to be like scootering for like as long as I can, like I just feel the most comfortable with Till. And like Colin gives me as much as I need out of scootering and I just hope to give them back as much as they need out of me, you know? It's like a mutual friendship. And I couldn't be more blessed to be on the team, to be honest. Tilt has always had such a great group of riders representing them. Having you join their team definitely took it to the next level. It's so good to see a company treating their riders with respect and dignity, when all you hear nowadays is pros not getting what they so obviously deserve. I love the way they kind of initiated the process with inviting you on a trip. Going on a scooter trip with a group of riders is definitely the best way to figure out if someone's gonna be a good fit for the team. I mean, you're spending every waking moment with each other and going through all different types of emotions. There truly isn't any other situation where you can get a real gauge of how riders will correlate with each other. In my opinion, you are the best rider the company has ever seen on and off the scoot. The impact you've made since linking up with those guys will be remembered and cherished for so many years to come. What advice can you give to scooter riders out there looking to film their first video part? Okay, here's some filming advice or video part advice, I would say. Right off the bat, I just gotta say, you gotta have fun with it because you gotta have to like look back at those clips and imagine the time that you're in and that's the most important part for me is looking back on the videos and having these memories. Next piece of advice is find a filmer that can work with you and that understands you and how you want to, you know, do your project. The next piece of advice is to not necessarily not have expectations, but when you go to a spot and have an expectation and like you get it done, maybe sometimes you can just dig a little bit deeper and do that trick you might've had in your head that you could have possibly done. And like, you'll walk away a thousand times more satisfied if you're just like, okay, I'll dig a little deeper and see if I can just pull this off or at least try it and see if you get close. Falling isn't the worst thing in the world. So sometimes you gotta fall to understand that you can potentially do the trick that you've like been contemplating. I don't really have much more advice other than just go fucking do it because it's fun and you'll have a whole lifetime of memories that are documented. So there you go. You hear that kids? Go have fun. Filming a video part definitely puts you through a roller coaster of emotions, but if you can't even go out there and have fun, what's the point of even starting the project? Whether it's your first video or your 10th one, Isaac is 100% right. It's all about going back and looking at the video 
and getting to relive those feelings all over again. You don't want to go out there stressing super hard and setting unrealistic expectations for yourself. That is a recipe for disaster. Another great point that Isaac made is you need to have that special relationship between you and your filmer. If you and the person you're filming with aren't on the same wavelength when producing a project, then nobody will be happy with the end result. I think that specific relationship isn't talked about enough in scootering, and people tend to underappreciate the magic of that connection. Once you find that right filmer, and you set yourself to some reasonable, yet gnarly standards, that is when you can look back at a project and really be proud of the masterpiece you guys have created. What is the biggest trick battle you have faced? Okay, so the biggest trick battle I ever faced. This one's a tough question for sure. I've had many long battles. I can't necessarily think of the longest one. Oh, actually, in my Puerto Rico video, the banger for that, that trick took like two hours. And that's in like Puerto Rico heat. That's why I am definitely shirtless. And I don't know, one of those times just stuck it, held on to it. Um, that was one of the tricks that I was like, maybe I could do this, but dude, it was such a big drop into a manual and TSI Paramount's flexed so much, like making it show that that manual, like making it show that I didn't touch my wheel and like holding it out was super hard. I definitely almost had a heat stroke during that one. I know that there might have been longer battles and whatnot, but that's the one that definitely came to the top of my head. Thanks, Richard. Richard Hart filmed that. Thanks, Richard, for sticking that one out with me. I remember when that video part dropped and watching the last clip and being like, okay, cool, yeah, that's a pretty sick bump to bar. Then you blew everyone out of the water when you dropped and just held that Manny so good. The amount of precision and balance that must have took would have definitely given me a heat stroke as well. I always love watching tricks like that where you think one thing's gonna happen and then the rider pulls out some creativity and blows you away. I know so many riders today take inspiration from that very clip and we're so stoked that you were able to sweat it out and ride away satisfied. Shout out Richard Hark for filming that beauty. Always make sure to show appreciation for your filmers and the time and effort they put in to make sure that your project speaks volumes. What has living in LA been like compared to living in Colorado? What has living in LA been like compared to living in Colorado? Well. LA is more expensive. I don't have the co-crew and out here in LA, I don't have any excuses not to ride my scooter. You know, there's weather in Colorado and stuff like that. Um, in the skate parks out here are definitely different. In Colorado, there's like more transition in skate parks. Skate parks in Colorado are super abundant. Like out here in LA, I only got a handful to pick from, which is weird. You know, you would expect there to be an endless whatever, whatnot, because I'm in LA, but honestly, Colorado has better skate parks. There's spots galore out here in LA. Like there's never a spot that's not available. Um, I'm able to film a decent amount more out here, which is very nice. And you know, people are traveling to and from LA all the time, so I get to see many, many different people. Colorado is kind of secluded, so you don't see too many new faces. I can't imagine the difference between living in the two states. Like you said, Colorado is more sort of secluded, and LA is definitely the complete opposite. So many riders go out to LA to try to make connects and film, but I guess it really depends on what kind of discipline you're trying to pursue. As a hybrid rider myself, I'd love to spend time in both areas just to take advantage of all the obstacles around me. Colorado has so many unique and insane parks, while LA has some of the most legendary street spots in the world. You can really see how living and riding in Colorado has shaped your style into what it is today. I can definitely agree though. I think LA is one of the biggest hubs in scootering right now, and with riders like yourself moving out there, it will continue to grow bigger and better as each day goes on. What current projects are you working on that you can share with us? Currently, I am not necessarily working on anything in particular. I'm just kind of filming and doing my own thing. Um, we do have some tilt projects coming up, um, but I can't really share any details about that. But um, things are definitely in the works. No worries, bro. We definitely don't want any spoilers. It's so good to hear that you're still out there grinding and filming as much as you possibly can. I know everyone is patiently waiting for that next Isaac Miller video part to drop. Every project you've been involved in has made huge waves in the sport, 
and I think it'll continue to do so because you have that much impact on and off your scooter. I'm sure with whatever's in the works, everyone's gonna show love and be stoked on it. Very excited to see what's to come. Any last words or shout outs you'd like to give? All right, so I guess that's it. Shout out to the co-crew. Shout out Tilt. Shout out Hellagrip for sure. Shout out all the LA boys holding it down, helping me out always filming, always down to scooter. Uh, big shout out to the Vault Pro Scooters. Thanks for doing this interview. It's been fun. Uh, to everyone who's watching or listening, um, hope you have a good day. Hope it's all going well. I hope you're enjoying scootering. <laughs> Peace out. Have a good one. You heard the man. Shout out to everyone that's had a part in getting Isaac to where he is today. Without the support of those companies he mentioned, who knows where Isaac could have ended up. I think I can speak for the whole community when saying we're stoked to have you involved and the footprint you've left is nothing short of impressive. You will definitely go down in the scootering hall of fame and nobody wants to see you stop shredding anytime soon. One last massive thank you to the OG legend Isaac Miller for taking the time out of his day to help put this interview together. Take what Isaac has said to heart and go out there and have fun on your scooter. Until next time my people, peace out.